Hey everybody, it's Jake from Algo Daily. Today we're going to cover the contiguous subarray problem. And our prompt is as follows. Given an array of numbers, return true if there is a contiguous subarray that sums up to a certain number n. So we have two examples in front of us. The first, we have an array 1, 2, 3, and a target sum of 5. And if we were to run this input through the subarray sum function, we would get true. There is a contiguous subarray that sums up to a certain number n. Contiguous means that the numbers are right next to each other. And so we know that 2 and 3, which is a subarray with uh, numbers that are contiguous, meaning continuing and right next to each other, 2 plus 3 equals 5. And so we know that there is a sum that sums up to 5. Then we have 11, 21, 4 as our second array, and we have a target sum of 9. And this does not sum up to 9, so we return false. Or rather, there is nothing that sums up to 9, so we return false. 11 plus 21 does not sum up to 9. Um, 21 plus 4 doesn't sum up to 9. And if you include each of these numbers by itself, none of them is 9. And if you sum up everything, it does not equal 9. So let's look at this diagram here. We have an input array of 6, 5, and negative 5. Suppose we had a target uh, sum of, let's say, 15. So immediately we can see that there's no subarrays summing up to 15, but that's only because the number of elements in this array is pretty small. But if we were to want to be able to rigorously and programmatically evaluate this input array, and its subarrays against um, 15, we would have to go through each subarray. So let's try that exercise and see how we would go about doing it. So we, of course, start at 6. And 6 itself is a subarray. And we see that it doesn't equal 15. So then we move on to the next possible subarray, which is 6 and then 5. And 6 and 5. Uh, sums up to 11, and that doesn't equal 15. Then 6, 5, and negative 5 sums up to 6, and it doesn't equal 15. Then we have to go to the next potential subarrays, which we can disregard 6 now and start at 5. At 5, 5 itself is a subarray, but it doesn't equal 15, so we keep proceeding. And then 5 and negative 5 is the next subarray to evaluate, but it equals 0, so it doesn't equal 15. And then finally, we have negative 5 itself, and negative 5 does not equal 15 either. Uh, you can see that the runtime complexity is going to be O of n squared because we have to iterate through the first level, which is each element in the array, and then we have to iterate through another level, which is each potential subarray following that element. So let's take a look at the brute force solution that we've uncovered here. So we have a function, subarray sum, and it takes an input array and a target sum. We iterate through each number in the input array. And starting at each number, we have a localized sum. Now, what we do is we have a second pointer, j, which starts right after. And that goes through the rest of the array and tries to find a subarray that matches the sum while continuing to extend it. Meaning we start at the first number and then we open it up and start with that first element plus its neighbor to the immediate right. And then we evaluate that subarray against the target sum. If we find it's too big, then we just break the loop and we move on to the next one. But if we, can, if we find that it's potentially um, going to sum up to the target sum, then we extend it by 1 and then keep evaluating from there. Eventually, if we do hit something that sums up to the target sum, we return true. Otherwise, if we make it to all the way through the end of all the loops, then we return false. Now, let's find a more efficient solution for this problem. Suppose we had an input array of 3, 2, 5, and 1, and a target sum of 6. And we want to find a contiguous subarray sum 
that equals six. So if we start here, as we did in the brute force solution, and let's try out some subsets. So let's start with three, which isn't um, going to equal six, so we continue. And then three and two equals five. Five is less than six, so we continue. Three, two, and five, that's too big, so we skip that one. And notice what we can do is we can probably drop this off and move on to two and five, which equals seven. So that's not gonna work because it's still too big, so we skip that one. And so we drop to two, and if we look at five and one, it equals six, and then we have a match. So one thing to notice here is that subarrays can be parts of larger subarrays. And knowing that 32 is part of 325, lets us play with the fact that 5 is this dangling extra element between 32 and 325. But the intuition comes when you realize that the difference between this subarray sum and this subarray sum is 5 itself. It helps to look at one more visual. So let's look at this diagram in front of us. Let's say we have the input array 5, 3, 6, 2, 1, 3, 2, and the target array, or the target sum rather, of 8. If we were to calculate a sum so far array, so meaning an array with running sums, so we start at 5, and then 5 plus 3 is 8, so the next element is 8, and then 8 plus 6 is 14, so we have 14 so far, and then add two more, and we have 16. And so we have this array with running sums. And this will prove to be very helpful given the intuition that we are starting to develop. So notice one thing. If we look at the running sum, and the running sum at element at the first index is eight, five plus three equals eight. That means that this subarray sums up to n. So that makes sense. So here we have one subarray that sums up to eight. Now let us continue on and suppose we were to want to see if there were other subarrays that sum up to eight. What we'll notice is that there's a pattern developing. If we see eight plus eight plus the number appear in the running sum array, so eight plus eight is 16. If we see 16, then we know that the change between this point and this point is eight. Same with 14 to 22. The difference in the running sums is eight. And so we know from this point up to the end, the change is also eight. But suppose we were to see eight again in this running sum array. That would mean that the change from eight to wherever the next eight appeared is zero. Now, let's build upon that intuition by looking at another example and see if we can find a optimal solution to this problem. Input array 5362132 has a running sum array of 5, 8, 14, 16, 17, 20, and 22. And the target is still eight. Now, what if we were to store the running sums that we've seen so far? Knowing that the difference between a subarray sum at a certain point and a subarray sum at another point, the difference between those two values is the amount that's changed. Why don't we look for a change of that amount that matches eight? And we could do this by storing things in a hash map. So starting at five, we see it. So let's just store it in the hash map. And we're not really using the hash maps value properties, we're just using them as keys. So we've seen five, and so we record that we've seen five. Then we get eight in our running sum, so we record eight. Then we see 14, so we record 14. But notice, when we get to 16, 16 minus eight is eight. And if we look for a previous key of eight, 
we see that it's present. So the big idea is that we can continue moving forward and iterating through the input array just once. And at each element, we simply store the continuous sum so far. And then at each subsequent iteration, reflect back on the values that we've stored. And if we find that the difference or that change matches eight, then we know that we've found a subarray. In this case, this subarray here, we know that this part is a subarray matching eight, and thus we return true. So here is a linear time solution. We initiate a hash map that is full of prefix sums. So it's easier to think of the concept of a prefix to the current running sum and a, a current sum. And so we have a hash map and we start with zero because that's the sum so far. And we use the value one just to record truthiness. Then we iterate through. And as we iterate through, we uh, increment the current sum and add the new number so we have a running sum. And then we check if the running sum minus n already exists in the hash. If it does, we return true because we know that that distance makes up the subarray that we want. But if we don't see it, then we just store it. 